The art of acting is also a science. So in today's top 10, I'm going to share with you the 10 books that I feel are most fundamental and important in really understanding the science of acting. In the last episode, I went over some things like marking up the script, developing your voice, and developing your body. These books will elevate your game even further. So are you ready to spend some time getting to know the systems that will help you get the roles that you really want? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Every Day is a Story All Its Own. I'm really excited to share with you today's top 10. I've chosen 10 books that will really help to elevate your game as an actor. Now the first two books on the list are by Konstantin Stanislavski. He is the Russian actor, director, and teacher who made a great, great impact in theater with a very, very detailed system. So the two books that I would like to share with you today are the two books that I used in college as my textbooks. The first one is An Actor Prepares, and the second one is Creating a Role. Now these two books cover it all in a very fundamental way, and I strongly suggest that you start with them. They go over things like concentration, focus, relaxation, working from the outside in and also working from the interior out. And depending on the role, you're going to need to use both of those skills. Another thing that it works on is sense memory, using the senses, attuning them, and really listening to your partner. So the next book on the list is by Peter Brook, and it's called The Empty Space. Now this book isn't just strictly for actors. In a lot of ways, it's meant for directors. But Peter Brook was a fascinating and talented man. He was the director of the Royal Shakespeare Company for a long time. He did a groundbreaking production of Alice in Wonderland that made a lot of waves, made actors and directors really think about breaking the traditional moles. And in this book, he really talks about four fundamental types of theater. So as an actor, you really should understand what's going on. He talks about the, illum the luminaries. He talks about a lot of different styles. The next book on the list is On Acting by Sandy Meisner, who taught for years at the Neighborhood Playhouse in New York. Now, Sandy Meisner is very important, and I know I've quoted from him several times already on this show, but I want to share to you with you today his fundamental book on acting. Now, this book, to master the things that are in it, takes decades, according to famous actors like Eli Wallach. And I truly believe that that's true. It's not that it's great in scope like Stanislavski's work, but it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of precision. Now, Meisner was very hard on his students, and it was sometimes months before he even let them pick up a script because of the detail work. So in On Acting, you're going to find great exercises for playing your wand, raising the stakes, and active listening. So I encourage you to go through the book, try them out, get some friends, get some partners, do the work that's in them, and they will really help you achieve what Meisner said was the epitome of great acting, which is to behave truthfully in imaginary circumstances. A Practical Handbook for the Actor is written by students of William H. Macy and David Mamet who studied with them at the Atlantic Theatre Company. Now Mamet is a great one when it always comes to the fundamentals, to no nonsense, no glamour, what is really at the heart of it for an actor. Now because David Mamet was primarily a playwright and also a screenwriter, he really feels that the job of the actor is to take the words on the page and to bring them to life in the way that the writer, with the help of the director, intends. Now this might be problematic for some actors, but it really, really is our job. And so in this book, they really talk about fundamental ideas about concentration, about working with the as if. Why I really like this book as well is it talks a lot about professionalism. It talks about showing up, doing what you're supposed to do, and not bringing a lot of ego and baggage to the process. Now, a book that's related to this was written by David Mamet, and no surprise, it has a very no-nonsense title, and it's called True and False. And he talks in more depth about these things. Mamet talks about the fact that acting is a verb. It's about going out and doing it. He's not real big 
on acting schools, and that's a trend in screenwriting and in other places too. So whether you choose to go to school or not, you need to study, you need to work the muscles, you need to get out there, take chances, and get your opportunities for practicality. Hence the name of the title of that first book. Now the next book I would like to talk about is Respect for Acting by Uta Hagen. This is a wonderful book after you've worked with those other books for a while to really, really start to focus. It works great in tandem with Sanford Meisner's exercises. Uta Hagen has what she calls the object exercises. It's about creating a space so you can learn to be private in public, which is so important for the actor. It gets ego out of the way. She talks about implanting meaning on objects, so a necklace that means nothing suddenly becomes the most precious thing in the world to you. What I love about Uta Hagen's work is you are so busy doing the technical work of creating your world, of creating the character, of doing the things that you're doing truthfully that you can't worry about ego and you're going to be professional and you're going to do the best work that you can. The next book on the list is highly technical and you want to really, really get comfortable with the other books on the list first and their exercises before you attempt to tackle this. And this is On the Technique of Acting by Michael Chekhov. Now what I love about Chekhov's book is several things. First, he talks a lot about imagination. Seems fundamental, but in the ways that he talks about imagination, it's terrific for the actor. It will really free you up. Because then he gets very technical, and he talks about things like the psychological gesture. The idea that anything that you do on the outside is reflecting what's going on inside. Your mental state, your wants, your secrets, your tensions, those internal and external dynamics that are working. If you can get those in sync through precise gesture, you're really going to be on your way. Now the next book on the list is Acting in Film by Michael Caine. This book is wonderful. Kane is a master. He will teach you how to work with the camera, which can be very difficult going from stage to screen. And it took me a very, very long time to master those techniques. Make the camera your friend. And it's very subtle, your position, the way you make eye contact, the way you orient yourself to your partner. The other thing that Michael Caine talks about is years and years in the business, what professionalism is, what showing up and doing your job and especially take care of your partner, that's a huge part of what he's talking about. He talks about actors who would leave and let a stand-in stand on the other side of the camera when they were working on an actor's close-up. And that was just, that was amazing to me that a professional actor would do that and leave their partner hanging. So that is a book that I highly, highly recommend. Now the last book on our list today is Improvisation for the Theater by Viola Spolin. I first read this book 23 years on recommendation from a mentor of mine as I began to teach children. So if you're going to work with children, and I strongly suggest as actors you do. For many, many years I toured in children's theater. A lot of people have a low opinion about actors working in children's theater. I'll tell you, it pays very well. You get used to touring, setting up in all kinds of spaces, and I will tell you this flat out. If you can keep three, four, and five-year-olds entertained for 45 minutes, keep them riveted on story, you can hold your own with any material any acting demands that you ever have. So Viola's book is full of exercises for improvisation. Improvisation is a skill that you must have as an actor. It's a skill that you need to have in the world as well. Look at things in new ways. Try different things out. Directors will love you if you can improvise. So those are all the books that I have on the list for you today. It's going to take you a long time to get through them. That's okay. Try exercises from each one. Try them next to each other. Like I said, get a group of people together. If you have your own theater company or you want to start your own theater company, this is a great way to do it. A lot of character building as well as a lot of community building ensemble building happens with these books so i want to thank you again for tuning in if you like this video please like it um, subscribe hit the bell so you can be one of the first to find out when there's new videos we got exciting things coming up we're going to start to tackle historical education i'm talking to an expert in the field who's going to come on the show and talk to us also please keep your comments coming what other top 10 lists do you want to see what have you worked on that so far that you really want to talk about and share. And I'll see you next time. And please always remember that every day 
is a story all its own. So keep on telling your stories, everyone.